I'm Miss Amy and I'd like to take you around the world with story time. Today we'll be traveling to France. First, let's look at our map. Here we are in New York, in the country of the United States, on the continent of North America. Across the Atlantic Ocean is the country of France on the continent of Europe. In France, the people speak the language French. If you were to see a family or friend, you would say bonjour. This means good day. The flag of France has three colors, blue, white, and red. France is known for its delicious foods. Here are some things you might find at a bakery in France, a croissant, a macaroon. France is also known for its beautiful art. This painting was made by the artist Claude Monet. So let's read some stories. Our first story is called Belinda in Paris. It was written by Amy Young and I'm reading it to you today with permission from Penguin Books. All of Paris was abuzz with the news that Belinda, the ballerina, was coming to perform. Belinda is coming, said the grocer to the lady in pink. Belinda is coming, said the lady in pink to her friend. Belinda is coming, said the friend to everyone she knew. Only one person in the whole city was not looking forward to Belinda's performance. And that was Belinda. It was not that her tutu was a little too tight, which it was. It was not that this was a very important performance with the best ballet company in Paris, which it was. No, it was that when Belinda got to Paris, she was told, ah, mademoiselle, we regret that your shoes went to Pago Pago, but do not worry, we will have them in a week. Belinda was worried. Her performance was that night. Without the right shoes, she would be a flop. Belinda went to the ballet company and broke the bad news. You need new point shoes, said the littlest ballerina, Gabrielle. Let's go. Gabrielle led Belinda through the streets of Paris to a store that sold ballet shoes. Ooh la la, said the clerk when he saw the size of Belinda's feet. He brought out the biggest shoes in the store, but they didn't quite fit. There is not a shoe in all of Paris that will fit such magnificent feet, he said. You must have them specially made. Try Monsieur Luc, the cobbler. The cobbler is a person who makes shoes. Gabrielle and Belinda hurried off to find Monsieur Luc and all over the city. When Monsieur Luc saw Belinda's feet, he threw up his hands. I do not have enough fabric. I do not have a form so grand. Bring me those things and I can help you. But I must tell you, I have never seen such a form. As to fabric, Madame Sophia's is the best, but who knows if she will have enough. Belinda and Gabrielle decided to look for the fabric first. They set off to find Madame Sophia. As they passed a bakery, they noticed a man with a big platter of food. It was Monsieur Fromage, the baker. Have some quiche, she said, a croissant, an eclair. Thank you, but we are in a hurry, said Belinda. What a shame, said Monsieur Fromage, very sadly. A big party was just canceled and all of this beautiful food will go to waste. When Belinda and Gabrielle reached Madame Sophia's, they found the shop in an uproar. Madame, said Gabrielle, this is Belinda the... Not now, cried Madame Sophia. I have a fashion gala in one hour and my caterer just had an accident. The party is ruined. Maybe not, said Belinda. What if we help to get food for your party? I would do anything, wept Madame Sophia. 
In no time at all it was arranged. Monsieur Fromage was ecstatic. Madame Sophia was so happy that she gave Belinda a huge piece of pink silk. But we still need a form, said Gabrielle, and the performance is only a few hours away. Belinda thought hard. Suddenly, she had an idea. She asked Monsieur Fromage for a favor, two favors, really, and then she and Gabrielle hurried back to the cobbler shop. Voila, Monsieur Luke cried, beautiful silk for the shoe and beautiful baguettes for the form. Baguettes are large lo loaves of bread. You are a clever girl. Belinda stretched and limbered up while Monsieur Luke measured and cut and stitched and tucked. The new shoes were perfect. That night, everyone in Paris agreed they had never seen such marvelous dancing. It is the baguettes which are just the right size and shape, said Monsieur Fromage, beaming. It is the pink silk which glistens and shines, said Madame Sophia, smiling. It is my fine workmanship which has given her a most excellent shoe, boasted the cobbler. It is all of that, Gabrielle said, but most of all, it is Belinda. She is magnifique. The end. So in France, ballet is very popular and famous. So that's a great book to share about France. I have a second book called Let's Go Hugo. It was written by Angela Dominguez. I'm reading it to you today with permission from Penguin Books. This story is about a bird who travels around the city of Paris. Paris is a very famous and glamorous city. Hugo was a little bit different. He preferred walking to flying. Instead of living on top of the trees, Hugo lived in a burrow down at the bottom. Instead of building nests, Hugo built works of art. Hugo was content living on the ground. One day, Hugo was finishing his latest masterpiece when he heard a voice. Hey, I know that building, said a little bird. Really? Hugo was overjoyed. Yep, she said. You can see it from up here. It's the Eiffel Tower. We can fly there. Oh, Hugo realized it was too far to walk. My name's Lulu, said the little bird. Come on, I'll take you. I'm Hugo, he said, and then felt silent. Lulu tilted her head and smiled. Let's go, Hugo. Um, I have to show you the park before we go, Hugo said. Lulu, Lulu thought that was a splendid idea. Relieved, Hugo led the way. First, they ate popcorn. After they finished eating, Lulu said, Ready? Let's go, Hugo. You can't fly in a full stomach, Hugo replied. We have to wait an hour. Lulu agreed, and they played in the fountain instead. After a little while, Lulu again said, Let's go, Hugo. But Hugo replied, We can't fly now. Our feathers have to dry first. Lulu agreed, and they watched a ballet instead. The show lasted into the evening. It's getting late, said Lulu. Are you ready to go, Hugo? Again, Hugo replied, we can't fly. It's dangerous for me to fly at night. Let's go in the morning. Lulu yawned. She looked at Hugo. At last she said, okay, well, I should go home then. See you later. Hugo, Hugo's heart sank as his new friend flew away. He'd never see the Eiffel Tower now. What if he never saw Lulu again either? He tried to run after her, but she was already high in the sky. It was hopeless. What's the matter, little one? It was the old owl Bernard perched high up in a tree. It was late and the owl was the only one awake. Hugo was so tired that he blurted without thinking, I'm afraid to fly. 
Bernard paused and said, Well, everyone is afraid of something. I was afraid of the dark, but then I realized all the wonderful things I was missing, like the moon and the stars. If you want, I'll help you practice. Hugo looked down at the ground. He looked up at the owl. It took all of his courage, but at last Hugo said, Yes, please. They practiced flying the rest of the night. There were many ups and many more downs. When Hugo finally flew to the top of the tree, the owl said, look at you go, Hugo, good job. Tomorrow we'll practice more, but now it's my bedtime. As the sun came up, Hugo was still high in the tree. Are you ready, asked Lulu landing next to him. Hugo looked at Lulu and then to the ground, far, far below. Not really, he said, I'm a little scared. Lulu smiled. It'll be another adventure we can do together, she said, except this time, instead of exploring the park, we'll explore the sky. Oh, Hugo hesitated. I never thought of it like that. Lulu stuck out her wing. Hugo took a tiny step away from the tree, then another and another. Until, let's go, Hugo, Lulu sang. Hugo took a deep breath and grabbed on. Off they flew. The Eiffel Tower was more beautiful than Hugo had ever imagined. So beautiful that he forgot to be afraid. Look at them go over the sea. When they got back to the park, Hugo asked Lulu, where do you want to go next? Lulu tilted her head. The sky's the limit. Hugo smiled and stretched his wings out wide. The end. I hope you enjoyed visiting France. Come back again soon and we'll travel to another country.